You know, doing the right thing with wrong people is an exercise in other matters. We all have faults. We all have issues. We all fall short sometimes. However, there's a certain group of people, and this is the thing, it's a sliding scale. Because sometimes you could be the wrong person for someone else and they could be the wrong person for you. But when you try to do the right thing with the wrong people, it's insane the things that can happen to you. I mean, it's, it's a trip. I mean, seriously, have you ever tried to do the right thing with the wrong person and have it come out horribly wrong? Of course you have. We all have. That's just one of the things about being human. It creates this dichotomy. But in the today's hustler mindset philosophy, I just thought about it from a different angle. How can you do the right thing with wrong people? Because there's this thing, um, like you said, I don't believe in karma. There are many people who believe in karma, who believe in future re redemption or retribution or whatever you want to call it. But since there are so many wrong people to deal with, how do you deal with them? Uh, one of the things that I tell people in my groups, get the 48 laws of power and not so you can use those tactics against people, but so you will know if they're using them against you. They are very common. You see it all the time. There is the amazing ability of good information, timeless information to be effective for a very long time, if not perpetually. But go, looking at the question, how do you do the right thing with wrong people? And this is just off the top of my head because I really thought about it and thought about it, but I didn't really have any outline. I think the first thing you have to do is look at your intentions, your purpose. What are you trying to get accomplished? Because sometimes you're doing the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, you're doing the right thing with wrong people because you haven't really clarified your intentions. You haven't clarified your purpose. You haven't clarified what you're about. So you just end up with any and everything. That's happened to me twice on some very, with some very, very negative outcomes. And I had to go back. It's like, okay, what, what did you do to bring this shit into your life? Because there is responsibility. Sometimes, you know, someone's like 100% responsible for doing something to you. Like you're driving and this drunk driver just bam. Okay, they're 100% responsible. You were just driving, paying attention. You're obeying the traffic laws. You had your seatbelt on. You did nothing wrong. In the grand scheme of things, that happens. In the grand scheme of things, often we play a role in why things are not working out. So I look back at my path and I came up with a few clues. I know this is going to sound really, really strange, but... A long time ago, BC, before Cape, well, no, that wasn't that long ago, that I used to care deeply what other people thought about me. I really did to the point that I would do stupid shit to myself. I would be around people, family, friends, just because I wanted to be liked. So I'm trying to do the right thing with the wrong people because my whole, it was a lack of courage. That's really what it was. It was a lack of courage because... I'll give you a quick story. When I became a business owner and I had to fire my first employee, it was something I didn't want to do. I looked around. I went online. I started looking up advice. I talked to a few people. I procrastinated. The problem got worse. So I go to the guy and I said, look, it's not working out. You're late every day. Your, your work is it's just, this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to let you go. Then he just looks at me and he says those words that everyone hates to hear. But I need my job. Then I said, looked at him and I said, well, then why didn't you really care about it? 
And at that point, I started to get more courageous, more on point. Because the thing is, you, you meet a lot of business owners and sometimes they're just kind of cut, dry to the point. It's just they've been there before. They see the pattern and they know that you're full of shit. They know this and that's why you're being treated a certain way. And you'll go whine on social media or, you know, whine to your friends when really you were the one that was trying to do the wrong thing at the wrong time with the wrong person. But going through that whole process of and this is a big problem. There's a lot of people who have been, they hate to fire people. They will keep someone online, keep them on the payroll for months, if not years. And no good and well, they need to fire their janky ass because they want to be liked and they don't want to rock the boat. And it is causing them money years off their life because the stress has to be massive. But these are the things that we do to ourselves when we're trying to do the right thing with wrong people. I mean, if you really, really think about that, how many times have you been caught up in that situation? I'll give you another story. I was working for this company and I was being mistreated. Now, this was a different tactic. I didn't get pissed. Well, I did get pissed off, but I wanted to quit that day. But it was not really a good time for me to quit. So I came up with an action plan and I started to treat customers differently. I started to ingratiate the customer to me, not the company. I sold me. And it was a very important lesson because I learned how to sell for the first time. I thought I knew how to sell, but. I had people asking for me. I had a different rapport with the clients. I had a different outlook. It's some of these people I see in public today, and it's like, hey, how are you doing? It's still that kind of relationship. And six months later, I left, started my own thing, and I never went back, and I haven't worked for anyone else since. But as you learn how to deal with people, because the thing is, everything you do is going to be through, for, and by people. It's not going away. It's, it's just that's just it. So you've got to learn how to classify and assign people. And this sounds very clinical. It sounds very cold and very contrived because, you know, everyone is amazingly valuable. Everyone has all of this amazing potential and everyone should be treated so importantly. And I'm going to say bullshit. When I started treating people like they behaved, my life got easier. I will give you a chance. I will hope that you will rise up to your potential. But if you keep acting like a donkey, I am going to treat you like an ass. And it's, it's really, really interesting because it goes counter to a lot of conventional thinking is treat people like you want to be treated. From a social, pedestrian, everyday interaction, that works most of the time. Most, it doesn't work all the time. Say, here's another classic example of doing the right thing with the wrong person. You're in a relationship with someone and you're treating them like you want to be treated. But it's not working out. They're, they're, they're just wilding out on you. They're doing all this crazy stuff and you're just unhappy and you're like, but I'm putting in work. I'm doing this stuff. I'm there for that person. And all of this stuff is going on. and You're so pissed off because you're doing the right thing. So you think. Let's go back to purpose and intention. Did you get with this person because you were fucking afraid to be alone? If you got with this person and you were clinging to them, just hanging on to them with your talons, just like, oh, and they trying to run away and they're bleeding as you rip their skin off. You're trying to do the wrong thing with the wrong person for the wrong reasons. See, there's a few times when you ask yourself certain questions, you'll come up with the truth if you're honest. Because when you go back and go back to intention, purpose, why, and you get deeper and deeper. I used to work with this guy who was thorough as hell. I hated talking to him, but later on I appreciated the conversations because it taught me how to be thorough, how to ask better questions. One question, two questions, three questions, four questions, five questions, six questions deep. And then I remember one time I was talking to one and she's like, I feel like I'm being interrogated. I said, you are. And she said, oh, why are you interrogating me? Because I'm interviewing you for the position to be in my woman. If you know, if you're interested, we can keep talking. But if you feel like this is too much, I can end the interview now. And just sat back at the table and just waited. And she said, well, what were you saying? 
And that's another thing. You can be really, really direct with people if you're clear on why you're being direct. I was being direct, not because I wanted to be an ass. It's just that's how I felt. That was really how I felt. And that's how it came out because I can be mean. I can be really, really mean. But there are many times that people accuse me of being mean. I'm not being mean. I'm just being myself. And we have a great many folks in this society who are patently sensitive, who are extremely sensitive and have no clue how to deal with the harshness of life. They somehow feel what well, well, life is unfair. I mean, it is. I mean, I'll just put it out there. I'll put some of my business out there for me to write a book to spend three months writing a book and that book creates an income that I lived on for three years. That's unfair, but give me more unfairness like that. It's only called unfair when you're on the short end of the stick. But if you're on the long end, it's all right. Just like when people do these business uh, projections or they make these assumptions for their business plans. And if it goes really bad, then it's, oh, it's horrible. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing. But if it goes way out of proportion of what they expected to make, then it's like you're geniuses. No, in both cases, you were wrong. <laughs> in both cases, you were wrong. But since it was such a financially positive outcome, no one's mad. But the thing is, you should be mad because your decision making, your analytics, they're off. There's something wrong. I mean, it's just like, OK, yeah, yeah, we made all this money, but uh, if we guess wrong like that again and it goes bad, we're going to be the goat. But when this is one of the biggest things, I think, with many people who are trying to start a business because they can't get out of their own head. They want to start a business, but they don't know why they want to start a business. And I, I've quoted this movie. And go ahead and get it. I don't know if you can get it on Netflix, but it's called Confessions. It has Alec, has uh, Ben Kingsley in it. Just watch the movie. There's some very, very interesting lines that apply to everyday life. Because the thing is, and I, I remember watching this movie and it just stuck with me. And because the guy essentially lost his mind and. I'm not going to spoil the movie for you, but there's this one line in there where he says, it isn't that people don't know what the right thing is. No, he said, no, it isn't that people don't know what the right thing is to do. He said, what the problem is knowing what is the right thing. Once they know what it is, they do it. And you saw that in 9-11. After 9 there was no crime in New York. There was no crime in New York for a few weeks. None. Because everybody whatever color creed, everybody was terrified. No one knew what was happening and it was the topic. It's like, are we going to war? Are we being attacked? What's going on? So everybody being in the same space at the same time, going through the same thing, acted the same. They knew the right thing to do because they knew what the right thing was. We could be attacked. We got to put our petty uh, differences aside and stand together. So, that is a brilliant case of doing the right thing with the right people because there was this cataclysmic event that spurned everybody to a higher level of service. Now, as you're putting together your business, you got to ask, yourself, why are you doing it? Because I I've said it before and I'll say it again. You're broke. You want to make more money. Cool. I, I totally get that. But that motivation is only going to last so long because the minute you get comfortable, the minute the money gets to where you want it to be, you're just going to slack back. And peel off because in Quora, someone asked, like, why do rich people who are already fantastically rich still work hard and build business and stuff? And the person didn't understand. I understood when you're doing what you like to do, it's not about the money. When you're doing what you should be doing for the right reasons, it's not about the money. It is very easy for someone who hasn't put themselves out there, for someone who hasn't really push themselves to discover what their right thing is to make those false assumptions because a lot of people who are really wealthy didn't get wealthy chasing money. They got wealthy chasing service. They got wealthy serving a bunch of people. They got wealthy building something cool. They got wealthy making something because it all goes back to people. So ask yourself this question. Are you doing the right thing with the wrong people? And if you are, why? Just go ahead and drop that in the comments and we can chop it up. 
So if you like the content, and you should, <laughs> go ahead and subscribe. And below, below the video, there are several lists. Well, there's only four, but I'd like to say several because it sounds more impressive of what you want. If you want video information, there's a list for that. If you want online sales training, there's a list for that. If you want online consulting, there's a list for that. If you want the digest, which is, I'll send that out once a month and that'll just be all the stuff that you missed. And a lot of stuff will have expiration dates. So if that's your list, cool, get on it. Glad that you joined the family. And with that, I'll see you in the next session.